I played my first golf tournament at age eight. I've been in the game pretty much uh, actively for 65 years. We live in a world where the word amateur has come to mean second rate. Nothing could be further from the truth. The word traces back to the Latin word amatora and means to possess an unconditional love or heartfelt passion. Virginia's ultimate amateur, Vinnie Giles, and his golf course, Kinlock Golf Club, are a reflection of a true passion for golf. The thing about amateur golf is there's only one place. They don't, you know, nobody remembers who finished second. You know, professional golf, now these guys have gotten so lazy that if they finish in the top 10, they're tickled to death. The old days, you know, the Lanny Watkins days, the Arnold Palmer days, the Jack Nicholas days, those guys didn't play for second, third, and fourth, and fifth, they played for first. Vinnie Giles' road to becoming the greatest living American amateur golfer meandered from his boyhood home in Lynchburg to a spot on the freshman team at University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The coach from the University of Georgia noticed his play and offered him a scholarship. At Georgia, he established himself as a top collegiate player, earning All-American honors three times. He became a consistent top performer at the U.S. Amateur finishing second three straight years, 1967 to 1969, before finally winning in 1972. Well, my biggest thrill in golf is certainly winning the U.S. Amateur. Reason being, one, it's a goal that every amateur has. Uh, it's, the, you know, it's the national championship. And secondly, if you go back and look at you know, my history leading up to it, Having finished second three times uh, and third once, I knew my time was running out. Virtually everyone expected Vinny to turn professional, but he decided it wasn't right for him. There was not a, not a whole lot of financial incentive to play golf back then. I don't even think anybody had won $100,000 in a year at that point. When I got out of school, I started listening to some of the people talking, and one of the comments, I'll never forget Billy Casper talking about how golf was nothing but a job. And I said, boy, golf is a whole lot better than just a job. And if that's what it's going to become at the next level, I don't want any part of it. After receiving a law degree from the University of Virginia, one day he started chatting with some of his fellow golfers who had turned pro, and they asked him if he could help them with some of their finances and contracts. It was the beginning of a successful career where he represented such superstars as Tom Kite, Davis Love III, Lanny Watkins, and Justin Leonard. He was one of the first to recognize the potential of women's golf and advised stars like Beth Daniel and Meg Mallon. Through the years, Vinny's achievements in amateur golf were remarkable. British Amateur Championship in 1975, participation in five Walker Cups, and on three Eisenhower Trophy teams, as well as numerous regional and national honors. He was also top amateur on many Pro-Am tournaments, including the Masters and three U.S. Seniors Opens. People ask all the time, did you regret the decision not to turn professional? And uh, my answer is yes, but not a whole lot. I mean, the reason I regret it is because I never would, did prove to myself or find out for myself if I were good enough to stack up against the best in the game uh, at, at that level. In the late 90s, he was approached about the idea of creating a club for a day golf facility. The Kenlock Golf Club was started as a collaborative vision of Vinny, C.B. Robertson III, and Charles K. Staples. After selecting Lester George as the golf course architect in early 1999, the four looked at the awe-inspiring possibilities offered by the unique topography and setting. Went out, I went out and looked at the land after the uh, engineers gave me the topo, and I, I came back to Vinny and said, yeah, I wanna, this is an almost perfect piece of golf property. Golf courses today Typically, with all this new fancy equipment and all these new architects and all these people wanting to be, you know, more dramatic than the last, they're moving a million to two million yards of dirt. They're changing the whole character of the, of the, of the land. We've got holes like 16 that look like they're totally manufactured. 
land God gave us, we didn't touch it. Then he went to the developers and said, how about considering doing a national private club that's equity based, that has a national membership and a local membership? And they said, tell us why. And he said, because this is really, really good. And Lester and I think we can do something pretty special here. The course opened in 2001 and the stately Tudor style clubhouse opened in 2002 as a club focused uniquely on golf with amenities including a teaching and golf fitness facility, pro shop, and an unrivaled practice facility. Cottages were added for overnight accommodations and national members. You know, we're very focused on the entertainment model, the business entertainment model, as well as providing our members the opportunity to have the best of you know, a very limited group of amenities. We don't have the tennis court and we don't have the swimming pool, we don't have the fitness center and those kinds of things, but what we do have is a world-class golf course in outstanding conditions on a regular basis that you know, we really strive to have the very best to offer in that arena. And then we strive to really provide a, a level of service that is a very comfortable, as I mentioned, Southern hospitality type of feel that provides a, uh, a relationship for our members and their guests when they come in that really makes them feel like they're at a place that's very unique. Kinlock became one of the most exciting courses in America, earning awards and accolades from players and the golf press alike. I think the key for Kinlock is it's a beautiful golf course. It's maintained like a park from tree line to tree line. But what we're looking for is a firm, fast golf course. One thing that's been stressed from day one out here is playability. We want people coming off the golf course feeling like they had a real special day. Vinnie Giles had met, played against, and worked with many of the game's greatest names. And he had helped launch a golf club that challenged the notions of what a club could be. Yet one more achievement would be added to his eminence. And the only goal that I had in senior golf was to win the U.S. Senior Amateur. And at age 66, to be very honest, I thought that opportunity had passed. I made about an 18 or 20 foot putt on the last hole, uh, and I'm watching the ball because it's straight downhill and it's faster than lightning. And all of a sudden, it's, it looks like it's going in. And I think it just, you know, all of the trying to stay focused, it came out. I wasn't even aware of the reaction until I saw it on a replay. But it was sort of the culmination of a, of a career that I was proud of. It, it was the last goal I had, and I met that goal. You kind of, you know, it's a whole, it was a holy grail of golf as far as I was concerned at the moment. Today, when he's not traveling, you'll often find Vinny back at home at Kinlock, continuing to build on his legacy and share his love of golf. I mean, Vinny is undoubtedly the most famous amateur golfer alive today. And his playing experience, I mean, he's played all over the world. He's seen every great golf course in the world. And having that experience and being able to draw from that on a daily basis from a maintenance playability standpoint is huge for us. You know, everybody they come in contact with here is, is giving them the feeling that it is a top level of hospitality and there are certain consistencies that we continue to, to strive for and each one of them is based on a level of excellence that we really focus on and I think everyone here takes pride in that. I think the Kinlock experience itself means from the minute you walk in that gate, everyone knows your name. You're going to have great service, great food, a great golf experience walking with caddies around the golf course. I have a chance to come in every day to a place that's just, um, you know, very unique, very special, uh, with people that are very much dedicated to what they're doing and really focused on providing a level of service to other people. And I have the opportunity to be a part of it. I hear people come in all the time and say how much they love the golf course, loved everything, but said the nicest thing was the way they were treated, that they felt like members 15 minutes after they'd been here. If you look at the greatest clubs in history in the United States, they have a common thread, and that is great architecture, uh, a great feeling when you're there, and always extraordinary playing conditions. My goal is to see it continue to be a place that people look forward to coming. Every time their calendar shows Kenlock on it, they can't wait for that date to get here.